Hey guys, this is Gary, and um, I want to make a video uh, comparing Photoshop Elements 12 and Photoshop CC. I want to do this because um, Adobe has made Photoshop CC available along with Lightroom for $10 a month. So that makes Photoshop CC um, affordable. So the question becomes, should you invest in Photoshop CC at $10 a month and get Lightroom with it, or should you buy Photoshop Elements 12 outright? Elements 12 is actually very powerful, and I want you guys to see how powerful it is as compared to Photoshop. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things in Photoshop that are not available in Elements. So um, I'm going to make a video on all the things that are different, but first, let's look at the things that are the same. Okay, so first I want to open an image into Photoshop. So I'm in the organizer, the elements organizer. And the cool thing about organizer is if you have Photoshop installed, it's aware of it. So I've selected this image of a model and I'm going to choose Photoshop. And here it is. It opens it up inside of Photoshop. So I'm also going to open that same image. I'll select it again and open it in the elements photo editor. There we go. Okay, so now here it is in the Elements Photo Editor as well. But I'm going to go back to Photoshop. And the first thing we're going to do is extract the model from the background. And we're going to basically replace this green gradient background with something else. So in order to do that, I'm going to choose the Quick Selection tool, which is also available in Elements. I'm going to start right about here and paint up around to select the background and sort of come back down and make sure... I finish that off. Okay, very good. I'm going to go to the select menu and invert the selection. So now the model is selected. So now the next step is to go refine edge from the options bar. That brings me up to the refine edge dialog box. And I'm going to use the edge detection technology, which is really cool. So I'm going to make sure that I've got this button selected right here. And I'm going to select uh, Smart Radius. I've turned on Edge Selection. I'm choosing Smart Radius, and I'm just going to paint along the edge of the hair. Make sure I include some of the background as well. And look at look at that. It just really makes does an amazing job of selecting those wisps of hair. So now you you might notice that the model is against a white background. Up here in View Mode, you can choose to see it as a selection. You can see it against a sort of translucent red background. You can see it against a black background, against a white background. You can have black and white. There's a lot of different ways to look at this, but I want to look at it against a white background. And I'm going to uh, zoom in and look at that. That's really good. But it looks like... Um, you know, there's a kind of a green tint to the wisps of hair. So I'm going to go shift edge and contract this uh, selection by about 15%. And that should, and it does, get rid of some of that um, translucency of the hair so the hair doesn't have that green tint. So now I'm going to go output to layer mask, hit OK, and sure enough, the background is gone. Okay, it's not actually gone. If I click on the layer mask and hold down the shift key, you can see that the background isn't gone. It's, it's just been what's known as being masked. And this is a layer mask. Very cool, very powerful stuff here. So now let's go back to the organizer. And we're going to choose this image here. I'm going to open that into Photoshop. And I'll take my move tool, drag it up and down. So now I've got this image uh, on a new layer. I'll drag this layer below the layer of the model. And now I'm going to go free transform by hitting command T. And now I'm going to grow it a little bit so I can sort of, there we go. So now I have a different background. So let's look at the edge. And look at that. You can see all the wisps of hair. That is awesome. That's amazing. This used to take hours to get a, to get a mask with this kind of detail, including the hair. 
That's really cool. Okay. All right. So can you do the same thing in elements? Yes, you can. So let's go to the elements editor. Here we go. Here's the quick selection tool, making sure that I've actually chosen the quick selection tool down here. It says quick selection in the options panel. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm simply going to start here and paint up, go around, make the selection, come down here to finish it off. I need to invert that selection first. So go inverse under the select menu. Now refine edge, edge detection, activate smart radius, paint along the edge of the hair, making sure that I'm choosing, I'm including some of the background. And look at that. This again in Photoshop, this would have taken hours. So I'm going to zoom in to, you know, that's really good. That's really nice. But I'm going to shift the edge by about 15% smaller the way I did. That'll, that'll help. That's really good. All right. So I'm going to, once again, output to layer mask, hit OK. And just like before, if I zoom out, uh, you can see that I've got it. It's great. So let's go back to the uh, organizer and open this image into the elements photo editor. Take my move tool by hitting the V key, drag up into the new image, the older image, and let go here. Drag this layer down below. And let me zoom out a little bit more. So now I'm going to go edit, transform, free transform. I'm going to make sure constrained proportions is checked. This is different. It's not this way in uh, uh, Photoshop. And I'm just going to grow the image until the background covers up. All right, so there we go. Let's check the edge. Let's zoom in. That's really awesome. Look at that. Perfect. Really nice. And there you go, right? So you get the same power uh, for masking and using layer masks in elements as you do in Photoshop, thanks to Refine Edge. And it's available in, in elements and Photoshop. Pretty cool. All right, let's do something else here. I want to show you the clone stamp tool. So let's look at this image. Let's open this into Photoshop. And here it is. Okay, so I want to get rid of this red and white tape. So I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this layer clone by double clicking on the layer label. And now I'm going to make sure that all layers is selected up here in the options bar. Now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to hold down the alt key to sample this tree trunk, come down here, line up the edge and just kind of paint. Okay. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to grab the area below the tape and sort of paint along like so. And I want to line up this tree trunk, so I'm going to go along the edge, line up. Okay, good. Good. All right, that's doing a great job so far. I'll sample down here by holding down the Alt key again, and then just coming up here and very carefully painting along. Okay, that's really nice. Good. Same deal. Okay, I, I grabbed some of the... Okay, so come down here, line up the edge. Nice. Oh, I got some of the grass, so I'm going to come up here and sample and paint down. Okay. Doing good, doing real good. Come down here, get rid of that grass. Oh, that's no good. So I'll just get rid of the grass. I'm going to make my brush smaller by hitting the left bracket key. Sample up here, come down and paint over it just like this. Okay, good. I'm going to come up here, grab the edge of that tree trunk. Oh, see, I'm screwing up a little bit here. You have to be really careful with this. You have to finesse this. Um, okay. All right, that's good. So I'm going to grab the edge of this grass and come over here and sort of paint that in like that. All right, I'm, I'm, oh, that's no good. 
There we go. So I'll get rid of this tape. And then paint like that. I've got a little bit of a ragged edge here, so I'll take some of this grass and bring it up. All right, we're almost done. All right, this is easy because the vegetation makes it real simple because it's so chaotic. It's it would nobody would ever know that you're cloning over the tape. And I think that's it. Uh, a little bit here. Okay, let's zoom out and see what it looks like. Perfect. Very good. Okay, now because I created a uh, a new layer and used sample all layers, the clone is on its own layer. So here's before, here's after. Here's what the clone layer looks like. Okay? Can you do that in Elements? Of course, because you have the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to go to Elements. I'm sorry, first I'm going to go to the Organizer, select this image, open it in the Photo Editor. Same deal, grab the clone stamp tool. Now I'm not going to do, I'm not going to, it's exactly the same. I just want to show you that it's exactly the same. I'm not going to do the whole thing because it's just taking too long. So I'm going to come up here just like before and then come down here. Okay, so you can see that it's exactly the same. Um, I just keep going here and I will absolutely be able to disappear this red and white tape just like I did in Photoshop. So I'm going to stop here because you saw, you've already seen how what I did. So let me let me um, zoom out so you can see. Okay, right there you go. Right now I didn't finish, but it's going to be exactly the same. There's Photoshop elements. All right, so. This is great, right? I mean, you can do a lot of what you need to do with Elements 12 without having to learn Photoshop CC. There's like a lot of things that are exactly the same. Here, you have the selection tools, the marquee tool, uh, you have rectangular and elliptical marquee, you have the lasso tools down here, the lasso, polygonal lasso, magnetic lasso, and then you have the quick selection tool, Magic Wand, and the Selection Brush Tool. Now, if you go to Photoshop, you also have the Marquee Tool, Elliptical and Rectangular. You have the Lasso Tool. You have Polygonal, Magnetic, and the Freeform Lasso Tool. And the Quick Selection Tool, you have Quick Selection and Magic Wand, but you don't have the Selection Brush Tool. See down here, Selection Brush Tool? You don't have that in Photoshop. That's because Photoshop has a function called Quick Selection. I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, this video would be an hour or longer if I were to show you everything that's exactly the same in Photoshop as it is in uh, Elements. But I want you to see that you have a lot of editing, editing power in Elements, okay? That, that's really the purpose of this video, to give you a sense of you can get a lot done because you have the power of layers. Uh, the model is on its own layer, right? So you have, And you have layer masks. Uh, I just want to show you one more thing, um, adjustment layers. So I want to choose the levels adjustment layer and up here I have, I can make my uh, shadows a little darker. I can make my highlights a little brighter. I can use my gamma slider to change the midtones. So here's before, after, right? So the image pops a little bit more, right? Before, after. This is an adjustment layer. It also has a mask, so I could mask out. So let's say I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, I'm looking at the model and I wanna really add a lot of contrast. Actually, I wanna make the sky look real dramatic. And that's what I'm doing. I look at the clouds, right? That's pretty cool. Like that. There we go. Look at how dramatic the sky is. But I really screwed up the model. So if I come down to the mask for the model and hold down the command key on the Mac, that would be the control key on the VC, and click, I've made I've got the selection of the model. If I click on the layer mask for the levels adjustment layer and then go edit fill selection with foreground color, or I can choose black. Watch what happens. <clears throat> Opacity 100%, mode is normal, hit OK, boom, and then I command or control D to drop the selection. 
that levels adjustment is only affecting the bottom layer here and it's being masked out by this layer mask on the adjustment layer. I can do the same thing in Photoshop, but I'm not going to do it. Just trust me. It's all the same. So I'm going to make a video on the difference between Elements 12 and Photoshop, but I want to give you an idea of how powerful Elements 12 is for editing. All right, guys, I hope you found this useful. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.